The world has become wary of the war on terror, but the defeat of the Islamic State can only be achieved by forces on the ground. This according to Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Spire of the Gloria Center, who also told IBA's Ari O'Sullivan that it was ironic that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad could be the one to defeat ISIS. Assad certainly wants that and everything which the messages which Assad is putting out are there to try to convince the West that he, himself, he is the fighter against uh, terrorism. Look, it's a real problem. At the end of the day, the Islamic State in Raqqa province in Syria will be destroyed only when somebody goes in on the ground to destroy it. And it's hard to see, given the nature of U.S. policy, this is it's looked like over the last half decade, who would do that other than the Syrian government forces? They're not strong enough to do it now, but maybe if the Islamic State were weakened by U.S. airstrikes, that might weaken it enough for Assad to move in. That would be a very, very problematic situation from the West, I think. But yes, it's not an impossibility. Assad would certainly want that. What's the irony about that? Well, the irony is that Assad himself arguably is linked to actually the most effective and potent terrorist network in the world, namely that led by the Islamic Republic of Iran and specifically its uh, Revolutionary Guards Corps. So it would be deeply ironic that a man who has been responsible probably for the deaths of around 200,000 of his own people eventually gets to pose as the uh, champion of counter-terror in part of his country. So the West seems to have woken up to ISIS and uh, Obama will be giving a speech later today. Yeah. What is, is Obama's worldview compatible with combating this kind of terrorism? Well, I think that's a really key question. I think we're, we're going to find out when we start to hear about the concrete policy proposals. It seems to me that ISIS is being pushed back in Iraq, and in Iraq the situation is somewhat simpler because the government forces and the Kurdish forces may well be strong enough to push ISIS back, maybe not across the border, but close to the border, away from its main conquests in Mosul and so on in the months ahead. But in the heartland of the Islamic State in Syria, that's the question. Is he going to go and destroy that? The president now says the policy objective is to destroy the Islamic State. It can only be destroyed in Syria. Who's going to go in on the ground to do that? Is it going to be American forces? Well, if not, what, can it be destroyed from the air? Probably not. Then who's going to do it? Assad's forces? Well, that's problematic in itself, the reason we spoke about a moment ago. So, yeah, a huge amount of questions remain, I think, about this. Well, you've always been saying that the... ISIS is not a formidable foe when it comes to formidable foes, and they haven't really combated anybody who's of any stature. So can it be destroyed? Well, it can be destroyed, but it can only be destroyed, as I said, in my estimation, from the ground. And the issue is who is it that's going to do that on the ground in Syria? In Iraq, it's clear. The Iraqi security forces and the Kurdish Peshmerga, with the support of the United States Air Force, are already winning victories. But in Syria, where there is no desire on the part of either the Iraqi security forces, obviously, the Peshmerga or the Americans to go in. The big question is who's going to do it? Yes, it can be destroyed, but the question is who can do it? And that's already a political question, no longer simply a military one. We are now on the 14th anniversary of 9-11, the terrorist attack, the Al-Qaeda terrorist attack in New York. And this is a conference on counterterrorism. It's been taking place for over a decade. Do you think that the world has sort of uh, lost interest in terrorism? So much losing interest. I think there is still, you know, the world needs to be interested because the terrorists are interested in the world. So there's no choice about uh, being indifferent to it. But I think there has been a, a certain weariness on the part of Western publics with regard to this very, very long war and long struggle. And unfortunately, I think what has happened is that people who've been willing to take advantage of that weariness, maybe to sell the idea that the war on terror is over, that it's already won, that it never really existed, that it doesn't need to be engaged with, those sort of people have got I think, a little bit too much of a hearing in recent years because of the great weariness that, you know, that uh, 13 years of war can certainly do to a society. Went on violence in the